how do you define flourishing? Because I, you know, I think most people divide define flourishing in the way that we have all the trappings of success around us. We have every toy we ever wanted. We, you know, we have the trophy husband or wife or whatever it is. I, everyone has their own definition of success, but it, you're not talking about that. You're talking about something very different when you use the word flourishing. Yeah. You know, I, I think that um, I always like to, to point this out that the best things in life are transcendent and can't be imprisoned with language. So when we talk about flourishing, we know we're using a word that's pointing to something that we can't fully name. So I I just offer that in all humility um, that we're trying to um, we're trying to describe something with our cultural frames and and the language we have. So the best things are transcendent, can't be named. Second best are mythical. You tell stories about them and then you kind of get close to them that way. And then the third best are empirical. And that's where I live. I'm, you know, a social scientist. So I'm working with uh, things that are third best, but we do uh, sort of intuitively know when we're seeing something that the word flourishing seems to, to cover. So if we think of flourishing as complete well-being, how is it complete? Well, you know, happiness and, and life satisfaction and well-being and wellness, all of these things can be um, extracted from the world at others' expense. So we can we can feel happy because we have the yacht and we're floating in the Mediterranean, sipping our, you know, margarita and laughing while the world burns. But that that's not flourishing. So what flourishing, I think, has come to represent and it's an it's an evolving dialogue, a critical dialogue often contesting how it's been used and and then trying to point to something more holistic. It's really this sense of wholeness amidst adversity. And um, not just what's good for me, but what is good for all without exception, what's good for the planet, what's good for the life sustaining systems that support us all and what is deeply meaningful and resonant with a larger sacred story. So that it's not a useful definition. I understand it's it's sort of like, you know, uh, a lot to grapple with. But when we when we talk about complete well-being. It's something that is um, relational rather than extractive or transactional. So my flourishing contributes to your flourishing, and then we flourish together. Our flourishing contributes to our world, and we all flourish together. Our flourishing world contributes to the unfolding of a sacred narrative, and then we all flourish together. So it's this sort of like, you know, uh, the Fetzer Institute likes to talk about a fourfold community of being where you have sort of the self, you have the world, you have the sacred, you know, you, you have the society, you have all of these interconnections, it's interbeing, really. And so you can have a high level of happiness and a high level of well-being and be doing terrible things according to a sacred narrative or do terrible things to the planet or terrible things to your neighbor. So flourishing, I think, is inviting us to think about how it all fits together. And that's uh, that's why I like the construct. I I was using it before um, I had joined the Human Flourishing Program at Harvard, and others have been using it to try to signify uh, something that is uh, really about uh, mutuality and dialogue rather than monologue and extraction. So uh, you know, I I like to say uh, just to kind of sum up, you know, flourishing is an outcome, but it's also a journey. And so uh, sometimes we, you know, we don't feel like we're flourishing. We're, you know, losing sleep, changing diapers for an infant at 3 a.m. and getting sick, physically ill. Well, you know, we're not flourishing. But actually in that moment, if we think about it, we are uh, nurturing through love the fullness of being for another. And that in, in itself is is very virtuous and, and uh, you know, flourishing. So if we think about flourishing involving an integration of individual, communal, planetary, and spiritual dimensions of life-affirming forms of well-being and ways that promote well-doing, then I think we have a richer conversation than um, the reality is that groups and individuals have been pursuing selfish forms of happiness at the expense of others. And so actually a lot of the conflicts, the deep rooted conflicts in the world 
trace back to an in-group seeking its own happiness at the expense of others or at the expense of planet. So flourishing is inviting us to start making connections between uh, the various domains of well-being that we might want to pursue happiness and physical health and, you know, satisfying relationships and the like, meaning and purpose, et cetera. Um, and how our pursuit of those domains of well-being are either generative for others or extractive for others. And so I think it's a, it's a lot to keep in mind. But if we don't keep it in mind, and this is why we need a community to keep it in mind, because we can't hold it all ourselves. But if we don't do that, then we're going to unwittingly create conflicts and harms in our world, or perhaps intentionally create harm, uh, harms and conflicts in the world. And we've had enough of that. We, we can't mm. uh, we can't continue on that path. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I've been noticing lately that just is like fingernails on the blackboard for me that I think relates to that. So I'm going to have you comment on it. There's kind of a sense of righteousness sometimes. Like people will advocate for things that they think are good for society. And, and there's like a, a background of righteousness there that is just like fingers on the blackboard for me. But it goes back to what you're saying. It's got to be everybody taken into consideration. Am I right about that? Like you're yeah, not really has... flourishing if you're just if you're just advocating for something that you think is the right way for everyone to live. Yeah, flourishing is a dialogue, not a monologue. And so this is why I was saying that it, it requires a community to hold it because we all want the good, but sometimes my good conflicts with your good. And so can we have a dialogue process that will enable us to better appreciate the good as other people understand it? And, uh, and, and find ways to honor that and find ways to build a global community that can resolve conflicts and get to the deep roots without trampling on the goods that are uh, being articulated. So it's, it's a very big challenge, but I think that it has to, we have to move from monologue to dialogue. We've had thousands of years of, of mo mostly monologue, and it, it doesn't get us very far. Um, and so we're, we're starting to listen and we're starting to appreciate and, and there are going to be some, some universals and there are going to be some important particularities. And that's, um, you know, that's really inspiring work to get involved with because you realize that um, your starting point has been enriched. You know, what, what you thought was flourishing now is starting to open up a little bit because you have received some precious wisdom from these others who have infinite value. 